going to start the recording now. Okay, so uh, so first today I'm going I'm going to spend around ten to fifteen minutes discussing your uh, 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 just introducing the last lecture. So uh, and which is strictly related to your final project. So as I as I told you last time, your final project is going to be available available starting from today, which is May the 4th, and it's going to be due on May 21st. Okay, so you will have, you will have roughly, uh, say, 17, 17 days to, to work on the final project. And the format of the final project is that you are supposed to, to work on your own. So there is no scaling code. And also, I will provide a very limited introduction of the outcome. The reason is that, as I, as I told you last time, when you go to your job, uh, a lot of times you are just giving a new algorithm to implement and no one is going to teach you, okay, what, is, what does each line represent? So I want you to, to develop the ability of doing that by yourself. And also, uh, of course, in your job, there will not be no skeleton code. So you are, you are supposed to set up all the skeleton code by yourself. And, and the thing, the, the good thing about our final project is that it's relatively easy. I mean, compared with your uh, premium algorithm, compared with your Dijkstra, this one is quite easy to implement. So it will not be too challenging for you to, 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 to type in the code and set up the, the skeleton code by yourself. And also you can borrow a lot of ideas from the skeleton code that I provided for you for the previous homeworks. They're quite similar. So just need to make some changes from that, okay? And another thing, another good thing regarding the final project is that you can collaborate. So each group can be as, as long as there are at, at, at most of three people in one group, that is fine. So, so, and you just need to say, say, um, find uh, at most two, cl two classmates to work on the project together and have a discussion if you want. So, but, but the thing is that your final grade, your, your sorry, the, the grade of your final project is going to be 60% dependent on your team performance. Let's say if your code works and uh, if there is any bug with your code. So it's going to be, 60% depend, dependent on the 60% depends on the team performance and 40% depends on your contribution. So say if, if there is a group with, with two students, then each student, so, so basically you are going to prepare a .java file for the code, for the actual code. And plus you need to have a doc file that lists the contribution from each team member. So which basically says, okay, this person, this student does this and this team member does that. So, and then your, uh, each of each, each team member has to, everyone has to submit that. Everyone must submit, even though you, if you work in a team, you submit exactly the same thing, that is fine. But everyone has to submit that and uh, and uh, so, uh, so that uh, say, say, say your grid, your grid is going to be uh, so, so calculated in this way, 60% team performance, 40% based on your contribution. So do your work. You cannot just say, rely on a, the, 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 the best guy in your group and say, okay, you, you do all the work. I'm just going to, to give you an upload, clap hand for you. No, uh, you shouldn't. If you develop this kind of like uh, so, so teamwork, team, teamwork habit, it will destroy your career. So, uh, and so some students may say, okay, what if I just want to do solo? I want to do the project by myself. That is absolutely fine, okay? It's also okay. So uh, this is your final project. And uh, so today we are going to, uh, your final project is going to be about the topic of all pair shortest path. So last week we learned the topic of single source shortest path. Single source shortest path is like we are giving a graph, uh, a, a directed and and weighted graph, and we we will have a source node. Let's say we put we use NYC as the source node, and then the algorithm the algorithm is is going to output the shortest path from NYC to all the other places on the map. So we learn two different algorithms for that. 
one named Bellman 4 and one named Dijkstra, okay, to solve that question. And today we're going to learn a different, different problem named all pair shortest path. So all pair shortest path means that we are going to find the shortest path. The aim, so so we the, the input is just a, a directly annotated graph with no source node. Okay, there is no source node, and the objective is to find the shortest distance from at, for every pair of nodes. So for every pair of nodes, we want to output the shortest distance. So for example, we, we want to know what is the shortest distance from NYC to Miami, from DC to Miami, and from um, Montclair to Atlanta. Uh, uh, sorry, this is not Atlantic. This should be Atlanta from Montclair to Boston. So basically for every pair of scores and destination, we want to know what is the shortest distance. And this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, so the definition of the problem. Giving a weighted and direct, directed graph, we want to know the shortest distance from every pair of nodes. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so so the biggest difference from this out from the out pair shortest path was we asked the, the the single source shortest path is like in single source shortest path we have a we have a source node and we want to know from the source node what is the that what is the shortest distance to every other node but in all pair shortest path we don't have such a source node node every node can be a source and every node can be a a, a destination. So this is the, the, the difference. And uh, so, so in, uh, we, again, it's pretty much uh, as what we discussed last time, we allow negative weights associated with an edge in a graph, but there cannot be any negative cycle. And we uh, last week we, we said that a negative cycle means a, 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 a logic error in your graph. There shouldn't be a, a, a negative cycle like, like 150% and 50 uh, cashback. So, and uh, so there are two, basically the, uh, there are two algorithms to solve the problem. And this one is named the slow one. So this is named the slow one. So, and the slow one is going to give us the complexity of, again, I'm going to only briefly go over the, the, the high level ideas of this algorithm. I will leave it up to you to understand it by yourself by reading the book, okay, by reading the chapters. So the slow algorithm is going to give us uh, the complexity of this, sorry. O, V to the power of fourth. V is the number of nodes in the graph. Four is like two to the, uh, it's, say, say it's, it's the uh, a square of the square. So the complexity is quite high. So, and then we are going to have, so we, we people design an algorithm based on dynamic programming. So guys, this is the, this is the, the, in my point of view, this algorithm, I'm not sure if you still remember my algorithm uh, that we have learned, which is really beautiful. In your point of view, which of the algorithms that we have learned is the most beautiful? BFS. DFS? Mm, no. The rod cutting problem one, the not actually hash. No, no, uh, we I, I, I don't even ask you to implement hash, right? Uh, but I'm glad that you come up with these names, it means that you still remember them, okay? You still remember contents or mm -hmm. do you have any idea of the contents or? We say that counting sort is really beautiful, even though it has a big restriction on the, uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not that practical. So we say that in counting sort, we are going to, we basically first count the number of occurrences of each, of each value, right? Do you still remember that lecture? Okay, so, <clears throat> So, uh, cool. Yes. Okay. That's cool. So then, um, this algorithm, the 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 all pair, sh sh the 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 faster version of this, uh, of the uh, of the all pair shortest path algorithm, we call it. We we give it a name called Floyd Washoff. 
for sure. And this algorithm is even more beautiful than counting sort. Okay, so the design of this algorithm is so intricate. So the the idea is uh, so so the idea is that it combines. I'm saying this is be, uh, because it combines graph search and dynamic programming. Okay, so so uh, the design of this algorithm is really beautiful. And so the idea is this. Okay, suppose that we are we want to calculate the shortest distance from node i to node j. Uh, we want to calculate the shortest distance from node i to node j. And of course, there are going to be some intermediate nodes between them, right? Say we say, okay, first we go to this node, first we go to this node and then go to this node and then finally we reach the, uh, this node. And finally we're going to, to be able to, to reach node j, correct? So this is the way for us to find the shortest path. Basically we want to, we, we, we want to extend the length of the of, of the of the route. Say so meaning that we, we, we try to say if by including more edges, can we reduce the total distance of travel? Uh, this is what we do in the relaxed algorithm. If you remember in the relaxed algorithm. So we have this U V W U V and W. U is uh so there is a uh, the the idea is this, this is, if this is the source node and we have a U and we have a V, what we do is that, so suppose so far we, we know there is a, this is the best way for, uh, from, from the source to, to the node of V. And then there is a, a direct edge that connects U to V in the graph. There is a direct edge. So what do we do say, okay, if we go from, we will try to say if we can go to U first and then go to V it can save us some time. We, we just take a deter at the UN to save this blue rod uh, saves us, uh, can save, help us to save some time. The idea, so, so this is what we, we do in relax. Basically we are, we try to add this edge in the shortest path and in, 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 in a rod from the source node to V and to say if, if by, in, by including one more edge can help us to save some, some time. So here, the, the, the idea of the all pair shortest path or the Floyd Washer algorithm is similar. So it, it tries to, to add more intermediate nodes in the shortest path from I to J and then to say, okay, uh, if that can help us to, to save some time. The, the, the reason why I'm, I'm saying this algorithm is so beautiful is that when we are ar arranging the intermediate nodes, what it does is, is that, okay, it first, in the, in the first iteration, it will say, okay, I'm only allowing you to use node one, the first node, node one as the intermediate node. Okay, so only the first node can be the, only the first node, first node can be the, uh, the intermediate nodes, can, can serve as the intermediate nodes. And then, so in, in, the, in the next iteration, it will say, okay, I'm only, I'm going to allow you to, to consider this, okay, use node one and node two as the intermediate node. So basically you have two choices, to either to go to one first and then go to two and then go to, go to J, or you can go to two and go to, uh, go to node one and then go to J. So you are allowed to use the first two nodes, the first two nodes as the intermediate nodes between I and J between the source and destination. And then next, it will allow you to use the first three nodes. First the three nodes as the intermediate nodes, no matter what kind of order it is. So every time it, it allows you to add one more node as the intermediate node to go between I and J. Okay, so, so you got me? But how does that change the the path, like the time? I guess to make it short. The, the time. Okay. So let's say, uh, how does that change the time? So let me give you one example. Okay. So um, <clears throat> suppose. Okay. This is Montclair, and then you want to go to, for example, uh, Boston. Okay. So let's say if. For example, if there is a strict road that can, there is a, a, a road that 
directly connects Montclair to Boston. Let's say in total, it's, it's going to take you six hours because it involves a lot of local roads. And we're going to say, okay, if we can, by adding one intermediate node between Montclair and Boston, say if you take one road, say I-80, if you take 180, first you go to New York and from, from New York, you take, you take I-86 or sorry, I-84 to go to Boston. Okay, this, these are the two roads that you pick. And this two, from Montclair to, to New York, if you take I-80, it's going to take you one hour. Then from New York to, to Boston, if you take I-84, it's going to take you five hours in total. So, so then are, which, which route are you going to prefer? You are, are you going to prefer this deterred route or the direct route? The direct route, it's the same time frame. It's going straight. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I use the wrong number. It's, it's four hours. It's four oh, hours. The other route. Yes. yes. You would you would prefer this route, this this route, right? Even though it it allows you to go go to New York before going to Boston, it saves you the time, right? Yeah, you shave off an hour. Okay. So this is the idea involved over here. So by adding one node, it's like we have one more alternative route. The the alternative route may end up with more time if it end up if if it, it, it asks for more time. If this route, if this is not four hours, if this is seven hours, we will go. We will not choose this one. We will stick with the original route. Otherwise, if it's four hours, we will choose this route. Correct? Yeah. Correct? For sure. Okay. So here you can see that it. By allowing us to use more more node as the intermediate nodes, we are giving more possibility. We are giving more choices of the routes. And from these new choices, we can say, okay, if the new choice can help, if the new choice really helps us to save some time, yes, we are going to choose that. Otherwise, we we stick to the original route. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So is this the concept like? GPS uses or the algorithm, I guess. So, sorry, can you repeat your question? Like when you type in the address on GPS, you know how it gives you multiple options. It says like this, this if you take this route, it takes you 21 minutes. If you take this one, it takes you 25. Is that the same concept that GPS use? Uh, yes, okay. yes. So, so when you enter, so when you say at the time, when you say, okay, I want to go from point A to point B, on your GPS, say on your on your Google map. So it's good if, if Google if Google does the computation, finds the, the shortest route from scratch at the time when you submitted the request, it's going to take a long time, probably two minutes, three minutes, because there are a lot of routes to be explored, right? So what Google does is that what Google does is that so be, it keeps up uh, calculating the 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 all pair shortest path between some major nodes. Say between New York to, to Montclair, between say 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 Clifton to Montclair, it keeps calculating, updating the shortest route from this major uh, between these major points by using the Floyd Washo L. And at the time when you submit your request saying that I want to go to go to uh, Montclair from my home, so it will just did one more extension based on what 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 it has already calculated. It will just calculate what is the best route from your home to Clifton maybe, and then combine that result because the, the, the best route from Clifton to Montclair has already been calculated, right? So it just combines, it just did some, it just does some, some minor calculation between your home and a major port, let's say Clifton, and then combine that, that, that uh, so, so local route with uh, the major routes that it has already calculated. And that's, that's why Google Map can 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 recommend the best route in a, in such an efficient way. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. No problem. So this is the the idea behind the Floyd Washer algorithm. Every time it's going to allow you to use one more node to as the intermediate node. So in the first iteration, it will only allow you to use the first node, and then it allows you to use the first two nodes, and then first three nodes. Is that where it's until we will keep this until it allows you to, to use the first V nodes, v, where V is the number of 
inter, uh, is the number of nodes in a graph. Basically, it allows you to use all the nodes as the intermediate nodes. Uh, so, so it gives you all the possibilities of, of uh, say, say, uh, it allows you to check all the possible routes from any pair of source and, and destination route. So this is the beauty of the algorithm. Uh, so, and it, so with, as you can say, this is the, uh, this is the pseudocode of the algorithm. It's not that difficult to implement. There are only three for loops. So here, this K denotes the, the first, you can use the first K nodes as the, the number of nodes that you can use as the, the intermediate node, as the intermediate node for you to make a detour. And I and J are just a pair, I is the source node and J is a destination node, okay? So, so this is how, uh, how, does, how does this algorithm work? So it allows you to, so basically in, in each iteration of the for loop is, it, it, is allow, it, it allows you to use the first K nodes at the intermediate nodes to calculate the, the shortest distance between any pair of nodes I and J. Okay, so this is the, the idea and uh, it's, it's not hard to implement it at all. I would say if your group consists of three or two uh, students who are good at programming and who can implement say BFS or, or, or PRIM without big difficulties, then so you, you probably will take, it will probably take the, the equivalent amount of time for you to implement Floyd Warshaw. So I would say around four hours uh, is a, 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 my expectation. And with uh, the help of dynamic programming, we successfully reduced the time complexity from V to the power of fourth to V uh, quadratic. So, so, and this is a big improvement in terms of complexity. Okay. So, and you, in, your, uh, in your final project, you are going to implement the Floyd Washer algorithm. Okay. So, <clears throat> so any question for me regarding your final project? No? Okay, so I, I don't go through the, I didn't go through the details of this algorithm because I want to leave it to you to understand it. So you need to read these two sub chapters in total. It's, uh, it's around, uh, it's going to take you one hour and, and 30 minutes to, in order to, uh, to finish reading these two, two sub chapters and, and, and have a good understanding about the, algorithm, uh, about the algorithm. You had a better read the book first before doing the implementation because it's going to save you the time. Okay, so if no question, then I'm going to talk about a major thing that is your, um, that is your, uh, say the the uh, the your final exam. <clears throat> okay, so um, your final exam is going to take place next Tuesday which is May 11th at exactly during our class time from 11.15 to 12.30. You are giving 75 minutes. And the time is going to be sufficient for you to do that. Okay, so as far as I know, uh, so some, some students, if they, they they prepared the uh, the final exam very well. I think uh, I, I I got some students who finished the final exam within thirty minutes. Okay, so it's so you you so you got more than sufficient sufficient time to to work on it, and so I know that a lot of you are work, are, are 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 interested in the format of the algorithm. No, sorry, the format of the of the uh, say final exam. So the final exam will be 
in the final exam, there will be no multi-choice questions. The reason is that this is a no multi-choice questions, okay? So um, the reason is that I, I, I designed this course for it to be a practical one. I, I basically want you to first, firstly understand the algorithms and secondly, to be able to implement them. So that's, that's the, the objective of this, of this course. So then the, the objective of the, the, the final exam is to evaluate how, how, uh, so, so how do you do in these two points, understanding the algorithm and doing the implementation. So I think the, so the, the, object, uh, so the objective of this course is two parts. So understanding of the algorithm and implement, implementation, the coding skills. The implementations are, have already been done in your homeworks. You, you have 10 homeworks plus one final uh, project. So to, to practice uh, your, your, your implementation skills, your program skills in Java, and for me to evaluate your program skills. But for the understanding part, um, so far I haven't done anything. So I haven't done, I, I haven't given you a quiz. Uh, because as you know, we are doing the, the online, uh, uh, so, so we're due to the, the COVID, I, I cannot give the quiz. So instead, uh, so your understanding of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the algorithms is going to be evaluated in the final exams. So, so how, how do I evaluate your understanding of the, of the, uh, of the uh, say, say, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, algorithms? So, the the format of the the format of the of the final exam is that I'm going to give you the pseudocode. So I, I don't I don't expect you to, to memorize all the pseudocodes. Uh, when I took this course, when I took the uh, the data structure course in my graduate years at Stevens, I remember that my final exam consists of ten questions. Okay, my final exam consists of ten questions. This is the, the, the final exam I got at Stevens. So uh, each of the question is just, okay, write down the pseudocode of X, Y, Z algorithm. Write down the pseudocode of, uh, of ABC algorithm. So, so to prepare that final exam, I have to memorize all the pseudocode. Uh, so in my head, and that's around 30 algorithms, uh, the, the, the pseudocode of 30 algorithms and just, just write, write, write it down on, on that piece of paper during, during the exam. And I, I took, it took me two days just to, 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 to memorize those algorithms, those pseudocodes, and it gives me a lot of headache. But my, so I, to be honest, I don't, I don't take anything away from that exam because right after that exam, within one week, I, I forgot everything. So I'm not going to memorize them for the rest of my life, even I'm not going to be able to memorize the pseudocode of any algorithm one month after the final exam. So it's just, it, it's just in my point of view, of view, it's just a total of the student's time. So I, I really don't enjoy that. And I, I don't think I can expect you to do that because it's going to be too much. So what I do is that I will provide you the pseudocode and also an input example like this array. I will want you to to write down the procedure like this, like what we did in the class. So for example, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the first class, when we learned the uh, insertion sort algorithm, so we had an example, right? So, so this is the sort of code and this is the example. We basically write down the procedure step by step. So in the final exam, if I give you the, the, uh, the uh, the pseudocode of insertion sort and an, an array, I would say, okay, what I would ask you, what is the result after the first iteration, after the first iteration of the algorithm? What is the result after the first iteration of the algorithm? Then you, you so for, for, if I give you the input like this, I want you to be able to use this run this pseudocode on the input and then write down the, the, the output after the first iteration of the algorithm. And in this example, it's going to be really simple. It's going to be two, five, four, six, one, three. 
So that's what we have uh, in after the first iteration of the algorithm. As long as you can write down this, it means that you have a good understanding of the algorithm because after you run this circle against the example line by line, this is what you are going to get. Make sense? We see yep. the whole thing, like the sort. Sorry? But you wouldn't ask us to sort the whole like array? No, no, I wouldn't. If it's a sorting algorithm, I, I would not, definitely I will not ask you to write down the final output of the, of the, of the example, because if I ask you for the final output, it's going to be just one, two, three, four, five, six. You just need to write down the, the numbers in a sorted way in, in the assigning order. So I, I'm so, and also to save your time, I'm not going to ask you for every iteration. I'm just going to ask you for one single iteration. It could be the first iteration. It could be the second one. Or could be the third one. Okay. Okay, let me uh, answer some questions from the chat area. Does this mean that we won't be writing code on the exam? Just trying to figure out the spe specified output. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't expect you to memorize the actual pseudo code or the, the Java code. So, so because this is a, another job interview, you are only halfway towards being a software engineer. So how can I expect you to write down the, the code in the final exam? You are on, so, so when you graduate, it will be great if you can, if you can accomplish that by writing pseudocode on a piece of paper or on, on the whiteboard, but you're only halfway towards that. So, so I cannot ask you to do that. So instead I'm just, asking you to write down the, the expected output of an algorithm on certain inputs, example. Okay, so any other question? How many questions is there going to be in the final? Is it gonna be 10? Oh, okay, no, no, not 10. So, in, in the whole semester, we, I divide our, our uh, course into four different sections, four chapters, sorting algorithms, basic data structures, dynamic programming, and graph search algorithms. So we got four chapters and each chapter is going to correspond to only one question in the final exam. So in total, you are going to have four questions. And, okay. So it's not going to be a lot. Okay. That's why some the I say some students can even finish that within thirty minutes. Okay. So, any other question for me? Okay. Last question. Um, to review, would you recommend just going back on the lectures and looking at the notes and studying? The material, I guess. Uh, could you please repeat your question? To review like everything, would you recommend? No. Um, sorry, what? No, I, I'm, I'm not asking you to, to get prepared for everything because uh, that's going to be my topic next time. So I'm going to, to, to tell you what we, which algorithms should you focus on in preparing the final exam. So you don't have to prepare everything. Oh. Okay. Do I answer a question? Yeah, um, also another thing, would you recommend just going back on the lectures and looking at the, well, actually want, I want you to tell us exactly I guess, what's gonna be on it, then we can go back and look, uh, refresh your memory. So I would suggest you to, to, to revisit the lectures. Ooh, okay. All also right. specific algorithms. Say if I say, okay, pay attention to this and that algorithm. Mm -hmm. Just check if you have a good understanding. So first, ask yourself if you have a good understanding of it. If not, go back to the lectures. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so just asking, are you going to do curving? No, so the one question from the chat area is that if I am going to do curving, so uh, if, you, if you view our syllabi, if you our syllabi, so, um, okay, so your, this section tells you how I calculate your final grade, if, including the final exam. So the final grade will be calculated based uh, uh, automatically based on the evaluation metric. Uh, so uh, there will be no curve. 
So, and without runs up and curve. So, uh, and uh, uh, this is the weight. Uh, so for, for all of your works. So we have the, ten, the ten homeworks work uh, is worth 70% in total. So each homework is worth 7%. The final project is worth 10% and the final exam is going to worth 20%. So you just need to get, so basically uh, after you see all of your grades, the, the grades for all of your homeworks, final project and final exam, you can just use a very simple equation to calculate your final grade. So the, the numerical grade. So I know that some of you say that Canvas calculated a grade for you. Can, the, the, in Canvas, there is a overall grade for you, okay? And that is not going to be accurate because it just averages everything. It does not take, take into cons consideration that the final exam is going to worth much more than a homework. So it's just the, so, so this is, uh, it just averages everything. So don't pay attention to that. So to, to calculate your final grade after, uh, after the final exam, you just need to say, seven percent uh, times your homework one grade plus seven percent times your homework two grade on uh, to this seven percent times your homework ten grade and then plus ten percent times your final project grade final project grade plus twenty percent times your times your final exam grade, okay? So this is going to be your, this is your numerical grade. And for, after you calculate this numerical grade, so suppose this grade is 92.5, and then so just suppose, okay? You can use this table just to get, uh, to automatically get your, your uh, uh, so grade level, so, so your, your alphabet, uh, Grade. Let's say if you got uh, ninety two point five, you, your grade will be A minus. Okay, and some of you may say, okay, what if I got ninety four point nine? Unfortunately, you will still fall into this category because I'm not going to do any run up. If if your grade is ninety four point nine, ninety four point ninety five, still it will be A minus. It it will not be A. Okay, because if I do if I do the run up for ninety four point point nine, what if then should I do this run up for ninety four point five? Should I also do something for ninety four point one? Right. So so uh, so in that case, I'm not going to do any run up. So your you so because after you got the grade for everything, you can pretty much calculate the latter grade by yourself. And if you see that your latter grade on on last is not what kind of you, you expected, just send an, e an email to me. Okay, make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> and also please do not send me an email asking me uh, after the final exam, say, hey, professor, can I get a more grid on something or, or can I, oh, or I, I think I just got a, a grid which you, barely makes me fail the course. Can I get a couple of more, more say points in order to, to, to pass the course? Or can I get a, a couple of more points to receive A or A minus? Please do not send me an email like that. I, I'm not going to reply that kind of emails. It's going to be unfair for the other students. So you, if you think that your grade is not fair, meaning that say uh, one of your homework grade is lower than expected or your final or, or say your latter level grade is not is not correct if you think that basically if you think the calculation is correct send me an email otherwise please like do not contact me regarding your grade okay uh, so so uh, this is because this is fair for every everyone this is written in our syllabi so it's going it's, I have to Stick to that and make make sure that it is fair for everyone. Okay, so the other question that I have in the chat area is that is the exam going to be online or in person? It's going to be online. So uh, next Friday, sorry, sorry, next Tuesday, uh, please log on to your your uh, say say uh, 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 
check your your uh, cameras around around eleven ten because I'm going to upload the uh, the 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 final exam questions around eleven ten and you'll be able to download it and work on it by yourself. Okay. <clears throat> well, can we print that and then like do it in uh, I guess with their with the pencil? Yes, you can print it out and and write down with a pencil and take the a nice picture with that and upload it. Okay. So you had better, if you take pictures of that, please make sure that you create a PDF file from that. So okay. it's, it's easier because if you, if you submit your, 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 your PNG files, your picture files, or PNG files, or JPG files, I cannot leave a comment over the file. Uh, the, the canvas does not allow me to do that. But if you, do a, if you make, it, uh, you make the, the, a PDF for, for the images, uh, I, I, I can leave some comments and then you'll be able to say, okay, where do I lose points? Why do I lose these points? Okay, yeah. thank you. No problem. Okay. Uh, so yes, you, you can use some, some softwares or applications on your phone to scan. It's, so I personally, I use a software named Scannable and on, on iOS. It's free and it takes very nice pictures and it automatically converts those those pictures to to pdfs if you want yes you uh so so you can you can uh so uh you can either write write it uh write down your solutions on a piece of paper or submit it uh, 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 a doc file that's both are fine how will be submitting that okay so i'm going to give you the time until 12 30 p.m next tuesday so make sure that you upload your, your uh, final exam solutions before this time on Canvas. It's, uh, it's going, the final, final exam submission is going to be closed at exactly at this time. Okay. <clears throat> so, any other question for me regarding the format, time, uh, and grade of your final exam? So, oh, uh, you're gonna tell us uh, like which algorithms on Friday? No, I'm going to tell you which which algorithm to prepare today. Oh, okay. Uh, previously, I, I I plan to to let you know this Friday, uh, but. Uh, I, okay, after realizing that, I, I, after that, I realized if I tell you to you on this Friday, I only give you three or four days to get prepared for a final exam. That's too short. So I want you to give you, I want to give you a whole week to, to get prepared. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let you know today. Is there any going to be a review sheet? This is the review sheet. So this covers this slide. Uh, I think there are around uh, 70 pages of the slide and it covers the most important materials that we discuss in the semester. So any other question? Well, uh, one question, when do you think you'll get the grades back to us? You mean the final exam grade? Yeah, like when we submit it on Monday or the 11th, Tuesday. So. so you are going to uh, you are going to take the exam this uh, next Tuesday. Um, so I, I, I'm, I will be able to finish grading your, uh, your uh, final exam by the end of next week. Okay, that's good, thank you. Okay, any other question? <clears throat> okay, if no question then uh, please pay attention um, in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so it's, it's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, 
So as I said that in the semester, we, 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 we divide our course in four chapters. Uh, the first chapter is sorting. So how many sorting algorithms did we learn? Four. Four. The first one is insertion. What about the second one? Quick. No, merge. Mm. What about the Is it heap? Uh, we skip heap uh, because that's too difficult. That's too difficult. We, can uh, we learn right quick, yeah, quick, count. right? And then we learn counting sort. Okay. So, um, in the final exam, to, to get prepared your final exam, just pay attention to this tool. Okay. So, so uh, just pay attention to to uh, quick and merge. Uh, that they are more important. And uh, so. And then the next chapter that we discussed is basic data structures. So how many data structures did we learn? Basic data structures. Did we learn or implement? Three. Four. The first one is stack. Two. Linked list, right? Yeah, linked linked list. List. Three and binary search tree, right? So when you, when you prepare your final exam, pay attention, just pay attention to binary search tree, <clears throat> okay? So then, um, so next we learn the dynamic programming topic. In dynamic programming, we, we cover, there are four different, uh, four problems and we cover three of them. So the first one is draw the cut. And then the sec, uh, so uh, I'm going to write down all, all four of them just uh, for, for, for the sake. And then we learned the matrix multiplication. We actually, we didn't, I didn't go through it, multiplication, but I'm just writing it down over here because there, the book just includes these four, four uh, problems. And then we have the longest common subsequence. And the, the after, the last one is the optimal binary search tree. Okay, so when you are preparing the final exam, just pay attention to draw cut and LCS. So you have to pay a lot of attention over here because if you don't have a good understanding of it, you will not be able to work out the solution at all. Uh, okay, so and then in the graph part, in the graph part, how many algorithms did we learn? Let's say I'm just writing down all of them. The first one is BFS, and then we learn DFS. And after DFS, we learn two, uh, three applications, uh, uh, sorry, two applications based on, D, D, uh, based on DFS. The first one is topological sort. And then the second one is strongly connected component. And then we learned the minimum spanning tree problem. In the minimum spanning tree problem, there are so we learned the, uh, we basically learned the prim algorithm. After the, the, the minimum spanning tree problem, we learned the single source shortest path. In single source shortest path, there are two algorithms that we have learned. Uh, both are very, uh, so we implement both of them. The first one is named Bellman Ford. What, what's the name of the second one? Dijkstra. Yes, Dijkstra. And then we learned the all pair shortest path problem in way which can be solved by the Floyd Warshaw. Warshaw algorithm, okay? So <clears throat> throughout this semester, we, we, we I, 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 honestly, I have to say that I give you a lot of work because if you look at that, we learned this is four algorithms in sorting and then four data structures. Uh, and then uh, uh, we covered three algorithms that can be, uh, that is based on, that are based on dynamic programming. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight algorithms on graph. So in total throughout this semester, we learned 15 algorithms. That is 15 algorithms, algorithms plus four data structures. That's a lot of work, uh, considering that we only have 15 weeks in a semester. So, 
and I'm I'm quite proud because uh, say if you look at the syllabi of of some well reputed universities like Rutgers, uh, like like Stevens or even like UPenn, like CMU, we don't lose anything to them. To be honest, we don't lose anything to them. I I only cover more materials than them. Okay, so so for example, at Stevens, at Stevens, we don't discuss, we we didn't discuss, we just stop up to here. There is no Freud version, there is no Dijkstra. So if you go to uh, the the uh, say, say the, even if you go to the MIT uh, Open Courseware, they have a similar version of this course, and what they cover is less than, than what uh, what they cover is, is less than what we cover. They, I think they uh, intentionally omitted some some data structures like this one. They don't cover stack and queue because I think those those professors think that's too easy. Those two data structures are too easy. So I really give you a comprehensive introduction of the algorithms and, and data structures and give you a lot of work. And so I'm sorry because I, I have to say that I push you very hard but unfortunately I have to, because this course, as I said in the beginning, as I keep saying in the beginning of the semester, as I keep saying throughout the semester, in my point of view, it's the one of the two most important courses that decides your IT or computer engineer career, your software engineer career. So this course basically dictates whether if you can do programming or not. So I have to give you this amount of, uh, of workload. And so, so, and for the graph part, for the last part, you only need to, pay, uh, instead of preparing eight algorithms, you only need to pay attention to this two, Dijkstra and BFS, okay? Just pay attention to this two. So, so here you can see that instead of preparing the 15 algorithms and four data structures, after this, you to, to get prepared for your final exam, you only need to prepare, uh, this, you only need to prepare, uh, say, six algorithms plus one data structure. So each algorithm is, is uh, going to take you half an hour. So that's three hours of the, uh, you need to spend three hours on the algorithms. And the data structure, because it, this BFS data structure, it involves nine algorithms. So, so it's going to take a longer time. It's going to take around roughly one hour for you, one hour for you. So in total, it's four hours of preparation. And uh, so, and all the uh, details of this, of this uh, six algorithms and one data structure can be found in this slides, in these slides. We just need to go to the, uh, the, the corresponding Chap, uh, so pages like say, so for example, the first couple of slides discuss insertion sort. You just ignore it and go to exactly go to merge sort and go over the the algorithm. After you're checking the algorithm, if you think that you you have a good understanding of it, just skip that. Otherwise, go back to our uh, video lectures. You can find it on my YouTube channel. And and go through that because when I introduce each algorithm, each algorithm is uh, so the introduction of each, of each algorithm takes roughly thirty minutes. So so that's why I said that you you only need to prepare at most uh, you only only need to spend at most four hours on the on uh, on the prepar preparation of the final exam. Okay, so any question for me? For the last part for the graph section, you said the Dijkstra and what else is going to be included? BFS. BFS, okay. Uh, professor, will you be posting exactly how you want us to prepare for the exam? Sorry? Like, um, what exactly do you want us to do to prepare? Like, you want us okay. to go through pseudocode and like really understand these specific. Um, okay. <laughs> so here, I'm just going to use one example. Okay. So if I give you the search pseudocode, the, the pseudocode of the search outcome for the binary search tree outcome, 
And then if I give you such a data structure, such, such a, a tree, and then I ask you, okay, how do you search for the node? Uh, how do you search for the value 13? So you need to show, uh, when you are doing the, the final exam, you need to say, okay, I'm going to start from the beginning and say, okay, because you just need to show me the search path from 15 to six, to seven, uh, to 15 to 6 to 7 to 13 because in the beginning you are go going to compare 13 with 15 it's smaller than 15 so you're going to turn on left and then you're going to turn uh because 13 is larger than 6 so you need to turn right and then you turn right over here you find the value of 13 and you stop okay so so and the other example that uh, i think is uh, it's relatively easy is this one the dynamic programming one. So for example, if I give you the, the pseudocode of LCS and I give you two input examples, like uh, the, this is the string X and this is the string Y, I want you to be able to figure out the, uh, the, the array B and C, where B tells us that the, the uh, so so the, the direction to recover the shortest, uh, to, to recover the, the LCS and the C tells us what is the length of the LCS? Okay, so you want us to draw on the test? Any question? Yeah, you want us to draw the matrix on the test? Yes, yes. If if the if I give you the LCS problem, then I will expect you to. Have to mute. Okay, so. Okay, so I just mute one student, and uh, so so uh, if if I if, if basically if the LCS problem show up, uh, if you remember in the uh, LCS lecture. Let me show to you, okay, here. I write down these two matrices, right? I would expect you to write down these two matrices too by yourself in the exam. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think, just type in one, if you think that you can do it now. Zero point five. Sir, this this was covered in the lecture, right? So we could just go to the yes. YouTube video and yes. just reference this. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> any other question for me? So I just wanna make sure this is clear. Like, so our answer should be a written format of how we would get after, or what does the answer would be after a certain implementation, implementation of the, the coder, which should yes. be. Yes. Okay. to demonstrate that you understand it. You don't have to implement the code, but you need to show me that you, you understand it. Okay, all right. Any other question for me? Okay, so, uh, cool. So uh, this Friday, I'm not going to have any lecture for you, okay? So this Friday, you are, there will be no class. Just take ad advantage of that time to, to, to go to get prepared for a final exam. Okay, so, uh, but if you have a question when you, are, when you are doing your preparation, just send me an email so that we can schedule a, a separate Zoom meeting and, to, 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 and so that I can answer your, your questions when you, are, when you are preparing it. So, and uh, depending on the requests from you, if, if a lot of students are requesting, say, 
say you are having questions regarding what, 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 I'm going to schedule, probably I will, I will schedule a, a, another office hour, maybe next Monday or this Friday, just uh, which is dedicated to, to answer your questions. Is that fine? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So yes, so if, if no other question, then that's the end of our lecture. So, and uh, I know that this will be our, kind of like our last lecture. And uh, so, so I hope that uh, I don't bother you too much throughout the semester. And I hope that you, you, you at least learn something from me. It means that I don't waste your, your tuition. And uh, also wish you a, a wonderful career. Thank you. Yeah, this class was awesome. Yeah, it was really helpful. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, Professor, this is our last class? I thought we're not going to have, well, I mean, I know that we're not going to cover any more material, but aren't we? So, so the schedule is that. Uh, so, like, next, this Friday, uh, I'm not going to, to give you any lecture because I want you to, to spend that time on the preparation of the final exam. And oh. next Tuesday is our final, final exam. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of the, the uh, we, we roughly have one week left, right? That is going to be your final project. You take time to do your final project. I've finished mm -hmm. all the topics that I want to discuss. Oh, okay. All right. So thank you so much then. This was, thank you. This was very helpful, very helpful. Thank you. You made all the topics like much easier than they, uh, than they are. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, professor? Hello? Would you like me to, like, it's not really like a question about my grade or anything like that. It's more like a question about something else. So you want me to type it or? Professor, I can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, so you said that, would you, would you mind? Uh, so going for one more, for more than a master, what, what do you mean by more than a master? You mean PHP? Yeah, yeah. Like, would it be like, like smart? smart? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so oh. yes, it, it's hard to say, I would say, say, uh, it depends on a lot if you have a passion for research. And, uh, but my personal experience is that if you are a science person, if you really love this subject and you want to 
investigate this this subject, definitely I, I would recommend a, 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 a PhD because master is in master is still pretty much like a, a, a undergraduate or a bachelor. Uh, you're just taking okay. courses and maybe you only do one project. But that project is very, very lightweight, lightweight compared with a project in PhD. Mm -hmm. So so you're not going to go that far. And uh, so so if you if you really love this subject definitely uh, and love research go for a picture but okay. that's a that's a big decision i mean it's going to take you at least five years to do that so so um depends on a lot of factors i i cannot say this is this is something like pretty much like some if i got a friend asking me okay if i should buy this car or that car i have to say it depends <laughs> Yeah, so so uh, ask yourself, okay, if, if you really want to spend another five years at, at the university and uh, uh, take a lot of pressure uh, on research, if you can sit in your lab for 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, because my dad's trying to like push me for it and everything. Because yeah, I'm going to do my master's in cybersecurity. That's like for certain. My dad's trying to push me for like more. He's like, oh, whatever, just get it, get it. I'm like, it's not that easy. So that's why I was just like trying to weigh it out, see if it's actually worth it. Because you know. I, I, I cannot make the decision for you, but I'll just say oh, yeah. for myself, I don't regret. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that's perfect. Good. Okay. Professor, thank you. Thank you. Really, you're literally the best. Thank you. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. Bye.